little clever things like uh, moving any actors in the game, platforms that can move between directions that you specify, spikes like obstacles that can kill the player, physics simulation just on 2D space so you are sure that your, act your objects never fall out, and at last some platforms that can unlock doors and different blockages. In short, everything that you should need for your uh, platformer, so let's stop wasting your time and get to it. And one thing to mention, the character I'm controlling here, the project I'm working with was created in a previous tutorial, so you have a link for that in the description, but if you want to watch just this one, you can easily apply it to your project as well. So let's start with something simple. We have here this area that our player cannot get to yet. So what we will do is to add here a universal platform that can move between uh, arrows or between whatever objects we specify. So uh, let's just dive in here. We're going to go into core and create here a new folder. And this is going to be for our platforms. And right in here we can create a new blueprint, a TTP actor, and we can call it a platform base. All right. Let's save it and right inside it we're gonna need to do a few things. First of all we need something that our player is actually gonna stand on. So let's add here a component and let's keep it simple. We're gonna make it a cube, scale it down. If you wanna be fancy you can do around it like a fence or things like that. I'm just gonna keep it simple. We need to stress it. And another thing we are gonna do here is add two arrows. So let's put here a arrow and we don't want them to be attached. So we are gonna attach it to default scene root and not to the cube. We can maybe rename our cube to our platform mesh. And our arrow is gonna be simply a location one. And if we duplicate it with pressing control D, we are gonna put here location two. Uh, let's change their colors a little bit and move our location to higher up. So we can press W to switch to location coordinates so we can move it and change color for arrow location 2 onto green. Perfect. Let's hide it here. We can move our platform base right inside here. Put it on this location. And what we'll want to do is when our player steps on it is to simply teleport our platform into our location 2. So let's grab it, grab it here and we're gonna keep it simple. We need to know the moment where player steps on it. That means we need to have here some sort of a collision that's checking for it. So let's click on our platform mesh so it's automatically attached. Add here a new component and this is gonna be a collision. Let's make it a box collision. We can move it up a little bit and now we can simply right click on it, add here an event and we're gonna add here a begin overlap event. Begin overlap simply means that when some object, some other actor that has a compatible com a collision, that has compatible collision setting uh, will touch this box, it will trigger this event. Just exactly what you want. But what we want is not to trigger this with every single the overlap event that happens here, we want to do it only when player is the one overlapping it. So we're gonna grab our other actor, we're gonna make sure that the other actor is equal to our player pawn. So let's get it here, get player pawn and put here a branch. And we want to continue only when this is true. All right, and the simple thing we'll want to do is to grab our platform and set its location. So let's grab our local platform here and set its relative location. So set the relative location and that relative location will be of course of a location of our uh, location too. That's why we have that arrow. So we're gonna grab it here and get it get its relative location. And we have it, get its relative location, connect it in here and connect it only after it's true. All right, let's try it. We can click on play. And if we step on it, we can see it got teleported and got teleported exactly to the location of our arrow. So because we made this with two separate arrows, what we can do now is to simply grab this location and move it all the way up. So now it's going to move right in here. We can maybe move it even a little bit closer to here. And let's make it another copy that so we can demonstrate that it can really work between different actors. So let's grab here another one and this one is gonna have the second location somewhere in here. All right, we can play the game. We step on the first one, we got it teleported right here on the left, and the other one got teleported on our second location. Well, platform may be a little bit of an overstatement because right now it's just jumping to our second location. We actually wanted to move slowly from A to B, and that's exactly what we're gonna do now. But before that, let's make sure that we save everything. So let's click right here and save everything we have here. Uh, we're gonna have to move it from here into some better event. So let's move down here and we're gonna make it a custom event. And that custom event is gonna be our start moving. And what we will want to do here is to slowly transition between our location A to location B. So let's just get it sorted here. 
we are gonna get our location 2 and then the same thing for location 1. Let's grab these both of them. If you want to transition between two different values based on some other value, you're gonna use for it linear interpolate. That's a simple function that's gonna set the value depending on what we set it. So we're gonna put here a lerp, a lerp vectors, it's gonna be our location A is gonna be A and our location B is gonna be B. And now we got here a one new variable, that's the value we can set, and that's our alpha. So by default our alpha is zero, that means A. If we set alpha to one, remember, alpha is always only between zero and one, uh, we are gonna get it to B. And the only thing you have to remember is that our A, it means zero, our B means one. So what we want to do is to grab setting our relative location, our location down here and connect it into our new location. There we go. So this is what we want to set anytime we are moving. And now after this branch, instead of calling it directly, we're going to call the custom event we created here. So let's call here start moving. The only thing that we need here now is to get something that's going to solve the count from zero to one. And for that, we have a really useful function in Unreal, and it's called Timeline. So let's make here one. I'm gonna add here a timeline, add a timeline, and let's call it our platform moving timeline. So now we gotta go inside our timeline and set our float here. And we can add here a track, and we can also add here a length. That's basically how long the timeline is. I like to set it on one second and adjust the speed later. I will show you how in a bit, but first we just want to add here a track. So we're gonna add here a float track, and this is gonna be our alpha and we will want to add here two keys so we can add here key on tau zero and on the end so let's add here a first key that's gonna be our time zero and value zero and we can add here another key which is gonna be time one value one all right perfect and right now it's gonna be simple linear function it counts from zero to one all good and we can maybe actually keep it that way just for testing and then i'm gonna show you how you can adapt it a little bit so let's connect our alpha in here alpha to alpha Keep it nice and clean, right? Now with this, that should do the trick. So let's go back in our game, click on play. And if we step over it, we can see it takes us up. Perfect. And what's good to realize that in this graph, we have points. And good old rule says, if you have more than three points, you can make a curve out of it. So let's make a curve out of it. Let's say we don't want this to transition directly from zero to one linearly all the time same speed so we can right click on it and start by adding easy in and easy out just by adding in and out you can see it's gonna slow down and let's say i actually want it to go much slower on the start and then speed up so i'm gonna add here another key and make from it the promised graph so let's grab it in here can do a transition like this and this should do the trick compile and let's try it now all right slow star and then speed up perfect and you can really play with this as almost a scripted events. So imagine we are making a horror-like effect in the elevator. And just grab here another key. So continue in here. Then it goes down. All it, all of it is automatically blended. And then goes back up. So what we are going to do is slow start. Then stop. Go quickly down and quickly up. Let's see if we get the prediction right. There we go. Maybe a bit too quick even. And talking about too quick, let's try to work on our speed. So... Uh, different platforms will transition different distances. We could figure out the algorithm that's going to automatically set it, but let's keep it simple. We are going to just add here a variable that's going to let us set its speed. So on our begin play here, we want to grab from the components on the left our platform moving timeline. That's just a reference to this timeline. And what we will do here is to set play rate. So let's set play rate. Play rate, that's just how fast is it playing. We can promote it into a variable and let's call it our platform speed. And now by default, we're going to set it to one because this is setting a play rate. Uh, that's play, that means if it's one, it's playing exactly the rate you set there. Uh, this makes it somewhat easier for us to set. And that's also why we set the timeline just on one second, because it's going to be very easy to do the math in your head now. I personally really prefer to do it this way. Let's connect it in here and make sure that our platform speed is going to be set as public variable by clicking on this uh, on this eye so we can adjust it per, per instance. That means per this uh, platform base. So what we want to do is to adhere two of them. And let's just change this a little bit. One is going to be behind the player, one in front of the player. And I would like to adjust this uh, new parameter we can see here. After we click on platform base in the details, we have platform speed. So if we set this to 0.5, it's gonna take five. Se uh, it's gonna take two seconds, and if we set it to two, it's gonna take uh, just half a second because we are adjusting and multiplying the play rate. 
So let's play with this. We can do maybe even a bit more. Let's do like 0 0.25 here. Not just 0 0.2, but 0 0.25 is fine. And 2 is fast enough, honestly. So if you look at this one, we get super fast. And did I not change the curve? Let me see. Oh, I did not change the curve. Let me keep it back to just simple. Simple going up with a little bit of a easy in, easy out. Okay, that's the job. Pretty fast. We go over this one. We got pretty slow transition. Does the job pretty well. And we will see that we are running into a little bit of an issue. Is that now our platforms just stay up here and they don't do anything. That's not very helpful for us. So how we can fix it is simply the second time we walk over it, it should go down. We will be calling the same event. So our start moving, but our start moving, once it's called, is going to switch between two different states. We are gonna go not from play, we are gonna go from play from start, that means every time this runs, it will run from zero, which by default is gonna cause a little bit of a trouble. Let me quickly demonstrate, I'm just gonna see it here, goes up, and if I jump on it and go again, you can see that it's just counting again from bottom, from the start. Not quite what I want. So what I want is to switch between going from play from start and reverse from end. And how I can do that is with a simple node which is called flip-flop. Let's put our A and B here. And what's gonna happen is that the first time it this runs, it's gonna go in play from start, the second time, reverse from end, then back from, from play from play, then back from play from start, and then it's gonna be flipping, flopping between them. Exactly what we want. Let's just see it. I can walk up here, works fine, let's jump and go back down. You can see it on this, walk around, go up here, and there we go. Does the job perfectly. Nevertheless, we can run into a little bit of a, wow, that was way bigger jump than I expected. We can run into a bit of a issue. So, as you can see, it sometimes can get interrupted, like you saw in the bug here. So we're gonna have to add here one more thing, and that's to put here a do once. And do once is a node that will let the code continue uh, only once until we reset it. And that's exactly what we are gonna do. So we're gonna move it in here so we're gonna look at from our finished and connect it back into our do ones now let's keep it nice and clean and now when we start moving it's gonna block our do ones let it go just once and after it finishes the whole moving that means when our timeline finishes moving we are gonna restart it and it can continue again let's try it and just walk up here it's gonna take us up I can go down and no matter how much I try to mess it up, unless it goes down, it's gonna, it's not gonna be triggered again. You can see, I can't really block it. There are some really interesting puzzles that could happen, by the way, just playing with this velocity. Because this is gonna add a lot of your velocity and you could use it to launch yourself onto the ground. I see there's some potential for puzzles, just throwing it out there. And now we got our platform set up, so let's make here a sort of a system that will let you animate any kind of a object that you just play into the world, place into the world. Let's say you can have any obstacles and enemies that are gonna be just moving up and down, all that. So let's see how we could go about that. I'm gonna have to go back into core. I'm gonna, we can make it still in our platforms and this time we're gonna create a blueprint, but, but we're not gonna create an actor, we're gonna create a component. Component is just something you can add into an any actor and it's gonna let it move up and down. To grab our actor co actor component, let's call it Universal Mover. Alright, let's open it. And by default you can see no viewport, because remember this is not an actor, this cannot exist in the level by itself. You can you cannot quite really just put it here. You have to put it onto some actor. Let's start by adding here two variables and that's gonna be two vectors. So let's start with one. And I'm gonna make it a vector. This is gonna be our target location and then we are gonna add here a new one and that's gonna be the original location all right and uh, our original location we don't need to change but our target location we need to set to public because we want to be able to set it even for our uh, co-actors that uh, are not that don't exist as blueprint actors for example let's put here this uh, crystal um, any kind of a static mesh you wish so i'm just gonna move it in here let's say it's gonna be blocking our player and let's make it bigger and make sure it can actually block our player so our player cannot uh, walk through it all right then put it here and we're gonna have it moving left and right so uh, let's grab our uh, let's move our player back so he doesn't get hit right from the start and now this is just an uh, actor existing in the level we can add it here and call our universal mover oh, not call we can just add it here there we have universal mover and we can specify our target location so let's do that let's say our target location by default is about 
100 units added to our original location. So let's keep it here as 100. And now we're gonna have to dive back into our universal mover. Let's grab our original location and set it. So we're gonna set our original location into our actor location. So we're gonna get here a owner. That's which actor is owning this component. You can also just add this component to any blueprint, purely up to you. I'm just doing it with a simple uh, static mesh. So we are gonna get actor location. And what we will simply want to do then is uh, set world location for our owner. So we have to grab it first. So let's set world location. And we're not actually setting a world location. We are setting actor location because actor location has to be always world. It's relative to the center of the world. And we're gonna set it to our original location plus target location. Let's add those two together. And this is the new location we're gonna set to. And after that, we're gonna wait for a bit. Let's say wait for two seconds. And then we are gonna set it to our target location. Oh, sorry, not the target location, just original location. Let's maybe put there some delay on the start as well. All right, so what we will see here is that we're gonna save our original location. Then we are gonna set actor location based on our original location plus our target location. And then after two seconds, we're gonna set it back. So let's see it. Can play the game, starts normal. It's not moving. That's because we are getting an error and our model is uh, static. It's not movable. So we're gonna have to simply set it to movable. And let's see then, right? Waiting two seconds, teleporting up. Another two seconds and teleporting back down. All right, back into our universal mover. You can also just do it by right clicking here and edit universal mover. And we could do pretty nice transition with a timeline. So you could just do the same system with a timeline, but we're gonna actually try a different system just so we learn about it. So let's get our back in play and we're gonna get here our timer. So set timer by event. And the timer is simply just a repeating event that keeps on happening and looping until you stop it. And in our case, we will never stop it. So let's set it to loop and we can set it to about 0.1 every tenth of a second. Let's start with that and we will update it if we need to. And then we have to create the event that actually happened. So let's put here our custom event and it's gonna be our moving idea. If you want it to be super optimized, you can do set timer by function and just write it as a function. We don't really care about it. It's a little bit easier to read if I do it like this. But uh, in case you want it to be super optimized, you would go with a function. And what we simply want to do is uh, keep our original location that has to be set even before we start the timer. So let's make sure that this we have set. Let's keep it here. And then we are going to do our lerping again. So we're going to be setting actor location on the owner. Let's just move it down here. So setting actor location on our owner based on lerp. Let's put here a lerp. And our location A, our start, is our original location. And the location B is our original location plus our target location, right? They can move it in here and connect. Uh, but where do we get our alpha from is probably what you are asking. Well, because we know that we are running here a repeating event, we can simply turn it into a variable here. So let's make it a variable. This is going to be our alpha. And what we will do is to grab our alpha and set it to our current alpha plus some added value. We can keep it to 0 0.1. It's going to be quite easy to understand. So it's going to take uh, exactly a second. I think no, it's going to be a little bit more than a second to get to one. So what will happen is that every time this runs, it's going to add a little bit to our alpha. And then that will be used for our alpha here. And we are going to see some nice transitions. So let's see it now. Can click on play and look at that. Keeps on adding and it keeps on going forever. Not quite our desirable outcome. So what we will need to do is to tell it that the moment it reached one, it should uh, not keep adding, it should stop discounting. Let's promote this to a variable. And we're, gonna call, we're gonna call this our added value to alpha. And if we move to the right, after it adds our location, we're gonna run here a branch. And that's gonna ask our added value to alpha. Uh, our, our alpha, is this currently bigger or, great, bigger or greater or equal than one? If that is true, then we are gonna change our added value to minus one. So we're gonna do like minus 0 0.1. Let's actually try something like 0 
can do something like that. So what this means is that if our alpha is higher or equal to 1, it's gonna next time it runs start subtracting because we are adding to it negative value and positive value plus negative value means negative value is being added to it, that means subtracting. So let's see, that we're going up and now we are going down, look at that. And we keep on going down. So we have to add here one more thing. I'm gonna have to check on our branch on the false if our value is actually smaller or equal to zero. Because if this is the case, we need to switch back to adding a positive value here. Let's see, and let's maybe adjust our values here. Let's say like 0 point and 0 point minus 1. Let's compile this. Let's see about it now. Okay, going up going down it's gonna take its time and going down but speed it up a little bit we don't have a whole day so while we are when we are talking about spinning it up we can just simply do it without timer let's set it to 0 0.01 that's about 10 times as fast i don't think this should be too fast but we will see okay look at that we got our moving we may be able to even use this as sort of a platform if you really insist it. All right, let's try to understand what's happening. I'm in my universal mover while the game is running and I would like to debug it in runtime just to see how it works. So uh, let me select here a debug object, universal mover. And on debug and play, we got set our original location that saved and never changes because we don't want it to move uh, because we want to still use it as a reference point from which we are adding to or subtracting to. Uh, no, we are just adding to it. Actually, we never subtract from it. And uh, then starting a timer. Timer that happens uh, every 0.01 second. And when that happens, it's gonna be... I'm wondering if this is not less than tick, because if it is, that's nonsense. But that's fine. I'm just... Uh, we can just ignore it for now. Just you should never set the timer value less than tick. It, uh, it creates a bit of a trouble. But uh, now back to the topic. When we are moving, we get our alpha. How much value is it adding? We are specifying right in here. And then while it adds it, after it adds it, it uses it for lerping. So it means setting value between A and B based on that alpha. And after it adds the location, it's going to check if the alpha is higher than 1. And if it is, it's going to start subtracting. Then if he decides that this is false, it's not higher than 1, but it is lower than 0, then we are gonna start adding again. It always keeps on adding until it hits 1, then it's subtracting. Once it hits 0 again, it starts uh, adding once more. So we got this really nice, we got really this really nice linear, linear interpolation that we can use. It's probably cheaper than using a timeline especially if you want to, especially if you make it into a function. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think you can put timeline into a universal or component. Never mind, I take it back. You can't put here a timeline. All right, but we got this. So uh, one more thing I would like to tune here is uh, that I would like to adjust this added value by my own variable. Let's promote this into a variable. And this is going to be our added value and we're going to make it public. You can make it public either by clicking on the eye here or checking instance editable here. Same thing. And when we are adding, we just want to keep it as it is. And when we are subtracting, we are going to take this value and multiply by minus one. And that's what we said there. Here we are adding just 0 0.1, pretty slow. Here we actually want to speed up. It's going to be double the speed, so 0 0.2. And here we want to move it a lot. So let's do like 0 0.5. And they are now moving between same target locations. So there you get it. That's exactly what you want from it. Pretty nice puzzles that you can make out of it. And let's also adjust how much they are moving. So for that, we also set it up as a public variable, remember? And we can set this to 100. This one should go to 300. And the first one we can keep to 100. And now we get them to do exactly what we already we are doing pretty well. Got here a bunch of moving stuff, but let's make it more interesting now. It would be pretty boring if our player couldn't die. Let's make here a new folder for it and let's call it trap. Right. And this first trap, we can right click, we'll create here a blueprint class and let's call it an actor and let's call this spikes. I'm gonna keep it simple. Let's just add here some sort of a static mesh, bunch of cones, something that looks like it can kill our player and just randomly spread them around. We can keep it nice and pretty like this. And what we are gonna simply do is the same thing we did with a platform, just sort of a collision that's gonna trigger our behavior that we want. Let's cover our whole object with it. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. We can scale it up. 
let's say something around here and let's just put few of here a few of them right in here we can put it on the other part here let's get rid of platform and get our spikes and we are gonna add here few traps all right there we have it so right now nothing is of course happening when he triggers it for that let's open our spikes and whenever he after he touches that collision we're gonna get here a begin overlap and we want to this time this time we are actually not gonna do check uh, whether the other actor is equal it's cheaper so normally that would be better but uh, we're gonna speed it up and do a casting and we do that because we will call we will call a certain function from within a third person character um, not third person our 2d character right so here we are gonna cast to it so cast to 2d player character and if it's true if the cast was successful let's print here a string all right we can try it and uh, I think it printed already here. Yeah, now it prints a bunch of time. Okay, so what we will simply do now, if we grab our 2D character, we're gonna make here a custom event. So I'm in the blueprint of a 2D character. Let's make here a custom event. This is gonna be that. And we already are familiar with our two ones, so let's just put it here. We don't want him dying more than once. And what we can do is to play some nice ragdoll. So let's grab here a mesh. We are, we are gonna set all bodies to simulate physics and we are gonna before that change collision settings. So we can do it after that, but it's fine. What's important is that we are gonna change collisions to response to all. So it's just set collisions enabled should be enough. And set it to collisions enabled. Get our mesh to block properly collisions and simulate physics. Check the new simulate. And here we are gonna call the event. So let's call it. Okay, let's follow it now and look at that, our character died. Right, let's do it one more time because this thing is particularly fun and I would say pretty good. But what we are missing is of course restart. So after we call our death, it should wait for a little bit. We can also maybe disable here a movement just to be sure. So let's grab our character movement, so we're gonna disable movement in just in case. After that we are gonna wait for a three seconds, let's do five seconds, and after five seconds we are gonna restart the game. And to restart the game we simply need to get current level name and open that level. That simply means unload what you currently have and load the same level. Now I'm not sure if it's gonna let us work well because we don't have our player start, but we will see. We got it. Oh, works perfectly. All right, and we still get some warning and that's probably it's trying to move our character after uh, we have killed him so let's see if we also disable movement should probably ideally just put there some checks to make sure that he's not being moved when he is dead but uh, let's just cheat a little bit right now and get him to sorry disable movement we're disabling input so let's grab it here disable input i forgot that's not for my character movement for that we are gonna get player controller and if we do that we don't even need to disable the movement because he will not receive any input anyway right we can kill him he's dead we can move him around nothing no errors perfect let's add here one more thing so let's say that we're gonna get our character back in here and we want to have here some sort of a door. And when that door gets opened, uh, when that, go that go door by default is gonna be blocked, and when we trigger something, it's gonna open. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go in our platforms, right click here, and create a new actor. And that actor is gonna be our, uh, let's call it button platform. And we're gonna do here very similar things we had before, so sort of a static mesh. Scale it down on top of it some sort of a collision and when we overlap this collision we will do something and that something let's cover up our collision here should be uh, here right in here should be let's maybe make it wider a tiny bit should be triggering some actor in here so uh, let's uh let's say about uh, let's make it the door so we're gonna make it a blueprint another actor it's gonna be our block a door and i'm just gonna keep it simple let's get here a huge cube like this and uh, when our character steps on this it should go down so we're gonna just make it an event uh, let's put it right here custom event it's gonna be let's call it unlock door we are gonna use move component 2 where you specify which component is moving and its target location where should it go once you try to do a little bit more complicated movements, it leads to a bunch of bugs, so I'm generally staying away from it. But uh, for very simple movement, it's fine. So we're gonna move it to minus 100. And let's say it should take about 2 seconds. And now, in our button, 
we're gonna check that other actor is player, so is equal to player. And when this is true, we're gonna have to get access to our blockade door. And this is our blockade door. And how we do that is by creating here a variable for it. Let's call it our door reference. And we're gonna create here this variable. This is gonna be a blockade door. And we're gonna make it public as well. And when it's public, that means we can assign it in the level. So if we put it here, we can simply click on this little button and select our blockade reference. There we go. And after we have it, we are gonna go in here. And first of all, we're gonna check that we have it. So let's put here a is valid. And if it's true, that means we have it valid. We can actually make it easier. You know what? Let's not have it dedicated is valid. Let's just put here, convert this into a validated get. And that was uh, unlock door. And if it's not valid, we're gonna print some warning. So, you know, you shouldn't be using it. And that should be door not connected, right? Let's just see it with both of them. We're gonna add here two of them. So first one I can just go to, that's moving out my obstacle. And the other one is not printing at all. It means, oh, because we still have it assigned actually. This one is copied, so it is not assigned so it is assigned we're gonna unassign it and we're gonna grab our second door and add our blockade door and make sure it moves even lower by the game now we got this moving down and if we step on this one it tells us door are not connected please i don't get know what to do all right perfect and we made this pretty universal so what you can do is to just move this door right in here let's say you have here some sort of a obstacle that prevents you from running through this and you want another another button to unlock it so we're gonna oh, now you can see i don't have here anything just don't tell anyone we can just move this down here which is far from our player we can move our player in front of it and this button will be connected to this door let's just connect it right here and this button stays connected to this door, so we know exactly what it does. This is like some nice tutorial. And now I can't get over it. Oh no, I'm stuck. So I'm gonna have to go back, come in here, unlock it. And now because I unlocked it, it's down. I can keep on going and see this has been unlocked as well. And the game keeps on going. Look at it. And then I die. Alrighty, there is one more thing I would like to show you, and that's how to handle a physics object in here. Because you may want to have here some things that roll, some things that simulate physics, but we are working in a 2D space, which may can make it a little bit more difficult. So, uh, let me show you how you can go about it. We're gonna add here that cylinder, I'll move it up here. Let's say make it a small cylinder that we can roll around. So we just put it here, and uh, rotate, it's fairly long, super small, something like this moving and rotating i'm gonna look down here on the right and simulate physics i click on play it's like rotating and now it's gone right it's completely out of my axis doesn't quite work but what you can luckily do is to look scroll down here and look at the constraints uh, and you can set which physics mode is it on so we have here a 6 dof that's your default that basically means i can move in all possible six directions so it means z x it means x y z and the opposites. What I can do is to lock it that it should be able to move only in I want to do X and Z and you always need to experiment a little bit and it seems like I was wrong so let's try X and Y. No that's nonsense right? Yeah <laughs> it's not quite that. We definitely want Z so we want Y and Z? That's weird but yeah that seems to do the trick. I'm gonna have to really move it to the side here something like this so it doesn't roll out but now we should see that it's ne it should never be in a situation where it can move into the X. No, ma no matter how much I hit it, how much physics I'm simulating here, it's gonna keep on being on way in this. Uh, it's gonna keep on moving on a bit in these directions. Uh, you can do the same thing for the rotation if you wish so, but uh, this is just easy enough for us. 